Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you hope you had a good Anzac weekend, that's always good. Here for more handstands, as always. Happy Handstand Monday, that's, that's what we're about. Um, if you're new, welcome. My name's Aiden. This is not... Uh, heads up before we get into the actual lesson today. This is not uh, necessarily a beginner handstand lesson. This is for someone who's been doing it for a while. Uh, we don't have to have a freestanding handstand, but for some of the stuff we're going to be going into, I'm going to assume you understand what the basic handstand shape is, because we're going to do some tucks and straddles. Um, we're going to do a little bit of crocs at the end, so I kind of expect you've got a basic level of wrist strength. Uh, we'll go over that when we, when we really get to it. Um, we'll, we'll just go over what what the plan is today, shall we? That would make that would make more sense to start off with. Let's do that. So we're going to do a warm up. As always, warm ups are great. Warm ups are good. Always do you want? We'll do some alignment drills. Slightly different this week. Um, again, always do the the body line stuff on the ground. Cannot recommend that enough. But I thought I'd give you guys some. Um, some newer things to try as well, so we don't just do the same thing over and over. Challenge your body. A little bit of tuck and straighter work after our generic handstands. We'll finish with a bit of crocodiles. We're not going to spend a ton of time on those. Um, that's more out of uh, concern for your guys' wrists than anything. And then, and then we're going to stretch down because, because of course, you should stretch down. Uh, so again, if you missed uh, on the title card, what you're going to need, you're going to want some space. You always want space for handstands uh, in case you fall over. Make sure there's no uh, light switches, windows, anything nearby for that, uh, and have a wall. A wall is your, your best friend for learning how to handstand. Uh, we want a TheraBand or a scarf or a really long sock or something something like that. Ideally not a stick for this, you want something you can pull and actively have uh, that to see when it's not got that pull going on. Um, something similar, TheraBands are great, scarves are good, something like that. Uh, a yoga block, or if you don't have a yoga block, uh, use a book like I'm going to do. Something that's going to be about shoulder width apart. It doesn't have to be exactly shoulder width, something yeah, around there. Um, a little bit of strengthening we're going to do with that. Some socks, optional. It's just going to make some of the wall drills we do easier. Um, and, of course, uh, if you're worried about falling and um, you're not comfortable bailing, uh, some cushions or some pillows or a spare mattress. If you got one of those lying around, that would be that'd be really good. Um, I'm not, as repeated before, I'm not going to teach you guys how to bail over the internet when I don't see what space and stuff is like. So, uh, working with what you're comfortable with. So I think we should actually just like get started. Uh, and the plan of attack for this is we're just going to do similar to what I think what we did last week. We're just going to do a little bit of spinal mobility, wake. Not quite like, we'll get to that, but we're just going to start off nice and slow. It's going to be sitting, you're going to tuck your hips under, you're going to tuck your ribs down, and you're going to tuck your hips under, uh, sorry, the other way, and then you're going to open your ribs up. So it's this wave that's happening. So from the side, it's tuck under, ribs close, tuck out, ribs open. Under, close, ribs out, open. It's just a little wave. Just get a little bit of feeling of where that compression is, what we're going to start with for our handstands, but also how to open it out. So the two main articulation points is here, uh, your your ribs, where that meets your spine, and your hips, but want to start moving with that little arch in your lower back as well. So that's going to start doing as necessary. Just a little gentle check-in, little wake-up, something to say hello. Uh, bring it back down to our hips, get our hips nice and aware, get our brain in them. Um, just going to be hip forward, hip side, hip back, hip side. So it's just four movements. Back, oh, sorry, side, forward, side, back, side, forward, side. Start turning into a little bit of a, a little bit of a roll. Just a, just a big old roll with the hips. Other way. And go back to just doing at a time if you need to, or if you just want to get straight into having a roll, and really feeling about how your lower back's going to move with that, and where it is, and what's moving it. Is it your core? Are you using your butt? Making sure we we're paying attention to which muscles are actually firing to make that happen. It's not a whole lot of effort. This is just a little little brain check-in. Uh, next one we're doing is same thing as what we just did with our hips. We're just going to move in uh, from our ribs. So this is our pivot point. Not from our abs. Everybody's going to stay still, but it's from the base of your ribs. And your shoulders aren't going to move either, so you're not doing this. It's going to be ribs pushed to the side. 
in front, to the side, to the back. Side, front, side, back. So feel about your sternum being the thing that moves. You shouldn't be doing from here, you shouldn't be doing any of this. It's just ribs. So you can start trying to move them a little bit more flow, a bit more circular into it. And you can go the other way. I'm trying to isolate that rib cage movement. Then we can put it all together. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be crunching both our ribs and our hips to the side. Then we're going to roll forward into that crunch at the front. Going to roll into the side and really try to pull your ribs into your hips on the side. And then you're going to do a little bit of a. It's like a dinosaur. I don't know why. I just think like a dinosaur motion. You're trying to sit your butt out and your chest forward as you come to the back. And you come back to the side, really pulling. So it's like it's always closing in on itself. If, I'm really hoping this is making sense. But it's really getting into all that funky little range. Make sure you're aware of your back. And you can go the other way, because why not? Always work both sides. All right, a little bit of a twist and a shake. Everyone knows I like doing my washing machines. And I feel like we should do a little bit of cardio, get you guys get you guys really working. So this camera is going to do 30 seconds of high knees, 30 seconds of butt kicks. Let's get my, my uh, fancy, fancy do free timer so we don't go over or under. Under would be worse. I'm okay with you guys going a little bit over. Uh, so high knees and then butt kicks. Just five. Uh, not five. Um, 30 seconds each. So a minute total. And go. Make sure your pants don't fall down because that would be embarrassing. Knees high, knees high. Making your stomach work, make those abs do their job. That's why you pay them. Ten second left of knees. Keep them high, keep them high, don't let them drop. And butt kicks. Just out for a run, you know, as you do. Fifteen more seconds, that's it. Keep that butt kick going. Don't let them drop, don't let your knees come up. Knees stay low. And stop just back into little bounces. A little bit bigger absorbing with the knees and hips and arms. A little bit of jellyfish jumps. Alright. We need to get our shoulders working. They're pretty important for our handstand, so let's do a little bit of that. Getting some blood all the way down through here, we're gonna go. I'm out to the side and can be facing down or to the side, I'm not really worried about you. Shoulders up, shoulders down. You want to do it fast. It's down, down, down. Not so fast you're going to hurt yourself, um, but you should be able to feel the pump. You're pushing blood down. And as you pull up, it's almost like you should lift your whole body off the ground. You look like an idiot doing it, but oh well. Keep your arms straight, don't let them flop, keep them locked. Feel yourself. Go faster, faster. And we can stop. Do some backwards arm circles, so both of them up, then come around to the back. Six, eight, nine, ten, we're going to go for twenty. Three, five, six, eight. We're going to do 20 forward. Make sure that in these, our chest isn't popping in and out. We want to keep that hand stature. Same as we always do. So back one. Two. Three. All right. 
make sure I'm looking for these. I always like doing these, it's just to... Ways to reconnect, to make sure everything's moving the way I want it to. Alright, come down to a little bit more shoulder workout. Get our wrists working a little bit as well. We're going to be in a plank. And same as we're just going to be rocking from plank through to our downward dog. Think about our hips coming up and our shoulders opening. So armpits really, really pushing into our toes. And it's plank. And focus on that open out of your arms. It's two. We're going for 10, guys. I should mention that before we start doing it properly, but make sure you're not going too far forward in your plank. You don't want to be hanging out here. Nice and flat. Heels on the ground if you can in your downward dog, but if you're like me and not quite there, that is okay. Five more. Two. Three. and five. Don't collapse out of here. We're going to turn to a side plank. You're just going to write your name for your top arm. Full name, depending on how long your name is. Keep doing that for a little bit, and once you've done that, you can swap and do the same name on the other side. Don't start switching names, that gets confusing. Or maybe you've given me a false name and you just don't, you just don't know. Back to our plank, into our downward dog. All right, uh, a little bit more shoulder we're gonna be doing. Uh, same as before, same as we do a lot. Gonna lift this up a little bit. Shoulders. Wide the hip width, I'm going to fold my hips, I'm trying to keep my back flat, I'm not arching, but I'm not fully collapsed over, it's just a flat back, thumbs to the ceiling, oh, don't die on me, uh, and we're going to go 10 to the side, 10 in a wide, 10 out front, and it's controlled, there's no swings, you should be able to stop it at any point whenever you want, so here we go, for 10, don't hit the wall, 2, shoulder blades together, for 3, Four. Make sure it's to the side. We, it's real common to go behind. Make sure it's just at the side. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. To the Y. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then just by your ears for another ten. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Watching, I'm just going to do a little bit of rock. And then I feel like, let's get into our wrists. Uh, so we're going to go, uh, we're going to start with some figure of eight separate hands, so leading with your thumbs out and in. You're not really pushing for max end of range motion, it's just trying to make every movement fluid and feel easy. You don't want to be pushing as hard out as you can in this. It's just a little wake up. Other way, so leading with your pinkies. Also, how are you guys doing? I hope, you, hope you're doing well. I hope you enjoyed Anzac weekend. I'm not sure it looked a lot different to a lot of what's happening at the moment. It didn't for me, but I think we're going to do some figure of eights all together. Also, Zoom classes. That's going to be exciting. Uh, we've got Zoom classes for all the free classes we're doing, plus a little bit more. So hit those up. Have a look at them. Uh, you're more likely to get better feedback on them. These are... The free classes are good. Still come do the free classes. But do the zoom classes as well. We go the other way. We're gonna go flicking out. So this isn't from the fingers, it's from the wrists. So we're just doing a couple of little flicks. 
and you're pulling back down and in. Be careful you don't hit yourself on the face for this one. Cool. We're going to go for our wrist push ups. Now, for that, we're going to do our shoulder push ups. So, as always, shoulders over wrists, make sure you can see everything. Keeping our arms straight, moving our legs back to make this as hard as we need to, or in. Not rocking our shoulders forward and back. We want to make sure that is nice and stacked. Ten wrist push ups, keeping our fingers on the ground for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 10 with just our thumbs, keeping our arms straight, no elbow bend. For 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Pushing into our first knuckle to get our pinky side hands off the ground. For 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then just 10 all the way to fingertips. For 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come back in, hands heel, and give a little bit of a circle around, feeling that pressure all around the hands. I've run out of things to talk about, I'm sorry, we're just going to focus on the class, which is weird, I know. Go the other way, keeping that weight in. Don't let it just come to your thumbs, your thumbs should be passive, your thumbs should be pushing to the ground. If I have my thumb here, lift up, it wants to be able to push back in. It shouldn't just be this passive. Your thumb work should be working as hard as any of your fingers. So you're always pushing that into the ground. Keeping your palms on, you're not trying to push up, but just nice flat hands. All fingers and thumbs working. You can go for a bit of a walk. So, just hands walking over and under, as required to wherever they feel like they need to be going. And of course, uh, the best one. Of course the best one. Just gonna lift it up. You don't even want to look at that bench. We're going to do our fish. So again, uh, elbow of the wrist, a little bit of pressure. And if you want to, you can just start doing both at the same time. And it's just rolling around. So helps loosen them up. And we're going to go the other way. Cool. We're just going to do 10 quick shoulder push-ups in a plank and 10 in a downward dog. And then we'll move into our alignment and strength lane drills. So in your plank, just squeezing the shoulder blades together and pushing back up. Two. Try to keep your shoulders away from you so you don't want to be up here. Nice and away. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Into your downward dog. This time, shoulder blades pushing, sliding up and down your back. One, two, three. Keep your shoulders open. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Cool. Grab a little bit of water as required. Uh, man, we're smashing through time. All right, alignment. Um, normally, I would say let's do the ones we do on the floor and the wall all the time. But I figure in the interest of giving you guys something else to work with, uh, in case that doesn't do it for you, we'll try a similar idea, which should be facing the wall this time. So find your wall friend. You're going to be facing the wall. Toes on the wall. Hands above your head. And you're trying to push your armpits. Can't see. Let's do that. There we go. We're trying to push our armpits onto the wall, our hips tuck under, trying to get the front of your hips on the wall, pulling your ribs off. Uh, and if you're worried about falling back, let's put some cushions behind you. We're going to be here, trying to open, get your ribs off the wall, your hips on, and your armpits on. We're just going to hold that. Keep pulling up to the ceiling with your hands. You don't want to let them start relaxing. It's up and push open. Uh, 
Uh, again, I would make you repeat that a few more times, but we have other drills we can do. That one's not too bad. The main thing you want to be thinking about is that push up. It's really easy to get the point where you're just trying to open and let it slide back. Uh, and this staying pulled away as well. Uh, we can do the same thing on the floor, uh, which lets you push a little bit more into the wall. You understand where you're trying to push. And it also takes the weird thing of where do I look out of it. Uh, your face can be looking at the ground in this one. It can also be looking at your hands. I don't really mind. Uh, but a lot of people find it's easier with face on the ground. Again, you're lying on the ground. Hands are against the wall like we would normally. Uh, legs are straight. Toes are pointed. Uh, from here, you're going to do that tuck under. And you're pulling in your ribs into your hips to make sure there is actually space for your hand to go underneath. So when we do this the other way around, we try and don't, not have that space, right? Which means the, uh, that core is engaged properly and your back is flat. This way to make it flat, you need to try and make that space underneath. So if I go here, my back's curved. If I do that, suddenly it's flat. It also lets me push off the wall. And I'm still trying to get my armpits into the ground. I'm trying to lift my elbows away and try and make that space into the ground, lift my lower ribs off. So we're going to hold this for 20 seconds. For now, 10, oh, 10, uh, 1, 2, 3, push yourself away from the wall, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, and 20. Both are alternatives, a lot of people find the looking the other way. It's really easy just to let your back sink out and not get that pull in. This is a different way of working the same space. Uh, just something to do. Uh, and before we go on the wall, I think we need to open up our look. And it's another good alignment drill, so hooray for that. Um, it's a good way of testing how much you control your, your dish with your legs or with your core. And it's just dish rocks, guys. It's just dish rocks. That's, that's the secret. Just do dish rocks. And, and your handstands. But also, do, do like a million dish rocks. Uh, and the way I, what I'm saying about that is if I'm here and I'm using my legs to make that dish rock happen, that's not going to help me in my handstand. I want to be using that core and that pull. So my hips don't really want to be moving that much. Um, we're just going to go for 20. That's all. That's it. I promise we'll do some handstands afterwards. Uh, the other thing is you want to be throwing your arms forward, so your arms still want to be reaching back. It's still that opening of the shoulder we're worried about. And it's that, the biggest thing that needs to happen here is that pinning. The idea that, and I, I apologize for the analogy, um, but it's like you've got a giant staple popped into your hips and your ribs, and it's just closing and pulling in. And it needs to keep that contraction to make that dish rock happen. So you stay on the ground, you do that tuck under, and we're just going for 20. Arms over here, they're trying to stay open. If it gets harder, the more you come up here, the more it helps, but it's less of that handstand shape. So we're trying to stay nice and long and straight, just doing that rock. So just for 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Halfway, guys. Point your toes. That was it. That's all the alignment stuff I want to do today, which are alternatives. Still, I recommend on the walls. That's what works for me. Um, but there's always different options, different ways of doing things. Um, just do dish rocks as well. The less uh, arm and leg movement you have in that, the better it is going to be for your handstand. But enough of that, let's do some handstands, right? We're going for time. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Okay. So the plan for today is it's still going to be three 20 second handstands on the wall. Um, da -da -da -da, I'm going to need a timer because I'm fairly certain I will lose count. Uh, 20 seconds hands down, thinking about that shape, so it's that, always that pull and that real, real push out. Uh, your shoulders never want to collapse. They never want to stay down here. They always want to be pinned up by your ears, that massive, massive push. Uh, and if you're feeling like you're getting that push or it's not quite working there, it's a slight, 
slight, okay, uh, it's not very much at all, but it's that slight kind of uh, external rotation. So what I mean by that is here, it's kind of like a twist on my pinky in, so it's a slight push up from there. It's not just a push out, it's a slight push in. That's what I seem to think about. No, I lie, I've got that the wrong way around. I'm thinking of a different movement. It's a slight push out, it's a slight little twist in, a little bit. Not much at all, it's a tiny little bit of a twist in to help lock that push out. Uh, so just 20 seconds, hands down the wall, each. That's all. Nice and close. And on the last one, we're going to go for a foot float. 20 seconds. Make sure you've got your space. Getting on and pushing up and breathing. Pointed toes. Twenty seconds done. Uh, so that's all we're necessarily needing for that. A little bit of a breather. We're just going to up and do it again. Uh, at this point, uh, if you're feeling confident, and or maybe you didn't try it last week, you want to the same like flexed foot idea that we talked about last week. That's what we're going to try for this one. So you can have either, if these were my feet, they're my hands. Even. Instead of having them pointed and sort of like leaning into the way, I can have one of them flexed or both of them flexed. It's going to push my body. Just a little bit further straight. Uh, if you're worried, let's put some cushions down, get a mattress ready, uh, whatever you want to do. But we're just going to go for it. It's another 20 seconds on the wall. If you're not comfortable with the flex feet, don't do it. Simple as that. Uh, I'd much rather you do what you're comfortable with, even if it's a little bit lower level, uh, until you're ready to try it. The only one I can tell you that is you without me seeing you guys. Uh, so just 20 seconds again. That's all. Getting ready. Up we go, uh, and we're going to flex the feet, get our body away a little bit. A little bit of a tumble with the end. So that's all we're doing for that one. Still pretty good, still pretty good, we're going okay. Um, Last one we're going to do, again, if you didn't try the flex foot thumb, we're just going to go for another 20 second hold. That's it, that is all. Not trying to kill you on this. We have, we have more work to do for that, don't worry. Um, but what we are going to do, if, for those of you who are comfortable with it, say you've got both feet flexed, you're going to flip uh, point one, and we're just going to do little, little lifts away. It's not a push. You're not pushing off the wall. You're lifting your leg away. The difference is the push is going to catapult you forward, and um, if you're not ready for that, you're not going to catch it or land it or get the balance even, or you might just bounce back to the wall. The lift is you taking control and finding that balance. So it should definitely be something you're actively choosing to have happen. And if it doesn't, that's fine. But we're just going to for, if you can, a little float away, if you come back to the wall, that's fine. Just 20 second hold. Set your timer up as you would like. Getting ready, and up we go. We're trying to do little floats away. That's it. So all up, you've just done a minute on the wall, which is just pretty dead. Well done. Uh, so we're doing okay. We're like halfway in. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Um, we're just going to do a set of five kickups on each leg today. Uh, and the difference in this one is that we're going to get you to start with your hands on the ground. Uh, so this is similar to the scorpion kicks we did today. We're going to aim to hit. I uh, not yesterday. Last week. Uh, but we're going to aim to hit that full handstand, a little bit of float, and come down. Again. Set up mattresses, or if you don't have a mattress or a pillow and you're worried about falling, do it into the wall, but aim is never to hit the wall. That's going to teach you to overkick. Uh, I would much rather you underkick a little bit, um, but, you know, learning it both ways is okay. 
hopefully we can see you guys soon and then we can go over how to bail properly. But at the moment, it is what it is, right? So for our kickups from the ground, let's go this way so you can see a little bit better. The plan is, hands are on the ground to start with, and I'm already stacking my shoulders above my wrists. I'm not starting back here, because then as I rock forward, I'm going to have to close my shoulders to stop myself. I want to start as stacked above as I can. And as I push up, I'm going to force my shoulders up and open. So if I start here, as I push forward, either I'm going to hit the perfect balance or I'm going to tumble straight over. So you're already starting. It's not quite a downward dog. It's like a horrible plank. Um, but hands on the ground, starting to step over. One foot's going to stay stuck. The other one's going to drive up with that push. Someone to our score kick. So we're just going to go five on each leg, yeah? Little float. Doesn't have to stay there for long. I did my good leg again because I was an idiot. Uh, better to start with the silly leg. That way you feel good when you do your good leg. Set up the blood throw, give your wrist a bit of a shake out as required. It's up to you. Uh, and we're going on the other leg this time. So again, stacking hands. Check the light so you're not going to smash into it. One. No one's good this leg. Two. Three, Ooh, a little bit of a stumble. Four. Five. Ah. And you might be able to see in my other leg, if he doesn't die, uh, I'm really arching my back to get that up, and that's not what we want. Uh, it's still that kind of curl push, and I think about when I kick this way, of driving my hips up, hips a little bit over, and then my legs can come to rest on top. So it can be quite slow. It doesn't have to be a fast kicker. Uh, let's see, grab some water. We're going to do a little bit of tuck and straighter work. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Um, and if you want to, I'll put your socks on now. Uh, we've done this drill uh, not last week, but the week before, I think. And the goal is going to be... I'm just going to flick a light on. It's getting dark. Oh, wow, look at that. You can see me in the light. I'm beautiful. Um, so what's going to happen now is you're going to find your space of the tuck on the wall. Uh, and the way you're going to measure that is if I go this way so you can see. I need a bigger camera, mate. I just need, I just need like, a way bigger camera. That would be that'd be lovely. My back is going to be against the wall and my hips are there as well. Now I'm going to pull my tuck in as tight as I can, and about where the heels of my feet go, that's where in line with my knuckles, my hands are going to go. Once I'm on the wall, I'm going to come up to my straight handstand, which is going to look a little bit skew whiffed, because my hands are further out than they should be. Uh, and from there, I'm just going to slide down to my tuck and back up. The idea is that your shoulders stack to your hips isn't going to change at all. Um, so it's similar to the idea of kicking up. So you want to stay stacked from your arm all the way down to your hip, and then your legs are the only thing that's moving. We're going to go for five tuck slides, and then do a similar thing for five straddle slides, and then we'll move on to a little bit of shoulder stabilization, and then crocs, I promise. So for this, you're going to find, I'm going to put socks on because it makes the slide easier. I mean, like, skin works. But it's not, it's less than ideal basically. So you're going to find your spot, how far your tuck's going to come in, find where your hand's going to go, and then you can walk yourself up the wall to that spot, stay your shoulders and hips, and slide to tuck, slide back up for one, for two, maybe a little bit closer. 
three, for four, last one, for five. Good little drill for learning how to move in and out of your tuck uh, and your handstand. Can be easy to forward roll out of, so sets and push up if you want, particularly when we do our straddles as well. If your straddles are not as nice as mine, um, some of you who'd be watching, I'm fairly certain your straddles are pretty damn good, so you'll be much closer to the wall on this one. Same thing, we're going to find our little straddle. So you can sit against the wall, go into where your comfortable straddle is. Not something you have to force in, it's not an in range straddle, uh, but something where you can comfortably open and hold. It's an active stretch. Uh, again, find that line for where your heels are, that's where your hands are going to go. Um, and it's that same idea of opening down. Your hips are trying to stay stacked, You're, and there's two common thoughts in the straddle one. Um, I don't think either is necessarily wrong, whatever works for you. One of them is your bum pokes out a little bit, so you have a slight arch uh, to help compensate with some of the weight goes. Um, the other is you try and hold it dead flat, but your shoulders close a little bit. It depends on where you're trying to compensate with the weight. Um, I would explain that if I can't really do one of those variations, because my straddle's, straddle's not great. But we're going to do it anyway, because that's how we get better, right? So you're going to find your space on the wall, open to your straddle, find that line from where your ankles are going to go, that's where your hands are. Up to the wall we go. Get everything stacked. I'm going to open out to our straddle, and back up. Get a little bit closer, I think. That's two. That's three, four, and five. Give your wrist a quick shake. Pretty nice to your wrists. I'm gonna, we're going to get pretty hard on those in a minute with Crocs. And you can take your socks off now if you're getting warm feet like I am. Those are really, really good drills to be practicing a lot when you do your regular handstand routine. Um, and a lot is going to be figuring out where that balance will be. We can do a little bit more on tucks and straddles next week, uh, but for now, I want to do a brief bit of shoulder conditioning before we move into Crocs and finish on those. So for this, I feel like I've done this before. I don't remember if it was this or Circus Fit class. We want our book and our TheraBand. I'm going to deal with this. Is I am going to be holding the TheraBand between my arms, and it's going to be elbow width, and I'm pulling it away. So my arms are actively pulling. TheraBand, scarf, the sweaty socks you just took off, whatever works for you. The book is going to be placed in between my elbows and I'm pushing it in. If I drop it, I've done something wrong. Yoga locks are softer to land on your face for this one. Uh, I'll prep for this. I want you to lie on your back. And we're only going to go for 10 of these, so it's not, it's not a huge time. Investment. I'm going to hold it at 90 degrees between my elbows and my shoulders. I'm actively pulling the TheraBand away and pushing my elbows in, opening to over my head as far as I can go, and back. And the goal with that is so it doesn't let your ribs come up. We're always focused on that chest shape as we always are for our handstand. So ribs stay in. Book opens up apparently. Go as far as you can. And then back. Don't let the book drop. Don't let the scarf or theraband slacken. Two. No, that's three. I lied. And if you're really good, you could just read the book while you're doing this. Make sure you're keeping the 90 so you're not pulling in and you're not opening up. It's always at 90. Five. Pro tip. Uh, rubber band the book shut so it doesn't keep smacking you in the face. I feel like I think it's the other way when I was doing it before. Two more. One. And two. Okay. Uh, and then we'll flex. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of crocs. Crocs can be really kind of difficult on the wrist, so we're not going to do a ton of them. We are going to do a little bit. Uh, but if you're going to train these at home, five minutes at a time, then stop. Build it up slowly. You, once you enter your wrists, you're out for a while. So be really nice to your wrists. It can be quite a lot. Um, that said, uh, it's a different shape to a handstand 
pretty much all together. The only thing similar is your bouncing units. And if you have handstand blocks, you can use those as well, and they take some of the weight out of your wrist. Uh, to start with, we're going to I tilt it this way actually, because I got a long croc. Uh, I'm going to get into my cat position. So I've got my knees on the ground, both my hands are facing forward, um, and I'm going to be pushing both into the knuckles of this wrist to start with. My hands are staying where they are. I'm going to leave my hands on the ground, I'm going to walk my knees around. So my hands are then stacked in front of me, one after the other, uh, and my fingers are pointing the same direction they are. So they're not going to turn, they're going to stay pointed to the side. From here I can widen my knees, which is going to let me bend my elbow, my uh, elbow closest to me, and it's going to place itself just above my hip bone, uh, right into the squishy internal organs, which is nice and helpful. Uh, and this is essentially the basis of your crop position. From here I can push my legs straight, uh, and I'm constantly trying to curve in. It's a side crunch. Uh, if this is feeling okay, I can bring my arm forward, I can keep this on the ground, and this is your beginning starting point, being able to hold just this shit. From here, you might want to lift a leg, see what that feels like. You could lift the other leg, or if you can maybe lift both legs. That's where you're going to start. I'm just going to give you guys what my shape looks like, okay? If this is all facing the ground, my shape looks like this. I'm really doing an active side crunch, that's, because if this is my balance point, it's not centered, I need to get as much around there as I can, which is why I'm curving everything around. The bigger the straddle, the easier it is. If I go straight legs, it's hard. And on this side, okay, cool, it's not dynamic. Uh, if you can see, I'm trying to arch as well. The more I can be in this happy little smile, the better my crop's gonna be. So that's your beginning shape. Um, and the thing to practice, I would have one hand far out. I wouldn't practice too close in unless your wrists are really unhappy with it. Uh, that's teaching you to keep and push weight up there. I'd rather you have it out here. The goal is to be able to lift to both legs off. And then from there, you might want to think about lifting your other hand. But just to go over the steps, get into it. We're going to be cat, walk around. Legs go wide to bend elbow, and the placement's sort of like, it's going to be different for everyone, okay? Everyone's got a different body shape and different body setup. Mine is sort of like just in above and inside my hip bone. There's this little hollow there. It's not comfortable, but hey, surface, right? And as I do something, keep my fingers spread, and I'm pushing to all of it. I'm not trying to let the weight just sit back in my wrist. I'm trying to keep it in the knuckle, same as you would in a regular handstand. And there's that slight lean forward, but your butt needs to be really switched on to lift up to try and arch. Once you get into the point where your hand can come off the ground, resist the urge to have it coming out to the side. That's actually going to help pull you down in the way. You want it closer to your ear. It'll feel right having it out here. This is going to help you more in the long run. It's trying to use it as a counterbalance to your legs as opposed to uh, giving you more weight, pulling you away from the side. It also lets you do a happy little banana. Uh, but it's also not wrong. If you want to have it out here, go ahead and have it out there. This is going to help you more balance in the long run. Uh, try both sides. Give you a demo of what the other side looks like. This is, again, not my best side, but still OK. And again, it's short and little. It's, it's very intense on the wrists. Um, so again, if you're going to do this, train it five minutes at a time, and then stop. Don't do that and then be like, yeah, cool, back to my regular handstands. I train crocs at the end, uh, so you know your wrist wall, and it's short periods. Be, be gentle. But crocs are also cool. I really like crocs. Um, that's as much as we have time for for crocs today. So we're going to do a little bit of a stretch down. Uh, a lot of it's going to be focused on the wrist. If you've got a partner here, we're going to do a little wobble. If not, your thumb goes on the outside, your hands go on here, and you're going to give it... So you're doing this kind of twisting, rocking motion. It just kind of flops your wrist around. It's really nice to do after a bunch of crocs. Um, 
yeah, unfortunately we ran out a little bit of time, but I also wouldn't I wouldn't do a whole lot of time on Grog Service. And be be nice to your wrists. Uh, but other than that, we've got Zoom classes starting up soon. Um, so go along to the Circus website to check that out. www.circus.org.nz um, Hit us up on Instagram. Show us what your current projects are on there. Uh, hashtag Circus of Community. Check that out. Um, we've got more live classes coming, so always keep checking back to here. It's just it's cool to keep connected with you guys, see where you're going. Uh, we're going to go do our fists, because this is just going to stretch our sail away, which is always nice. Keeping our fists tightened in, keeping the backs of our fists on the ground, it's going to straighten up. Especially for Crocs, this set of muscles gets quite uh, overused in terms of like pulling in. Um, or at least I find it does for me. Uh, and this is just really, really gentle and nice to do afterwards. So so do it, basically. It's, it's good for you. But yeah, I hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, take it gentle with Crocs. Keep hand on the ground. Uh, focus on just lifting your legs for now. And the last... Oh, we can do, we can do, a, couple, we can do a couple stretches. Um, we can do... Actually, better version. We can do this one, but one I find targets that spot a little bit more effectively. So you're going to be in your cat shape. You're going to dive one arm through, so you've got a shoulder on the ground. And it's like someone's pulling this hand here away. And I'm letting the shoulder blade drop down my back. And I'm pulling with resistance. So I'm feeling like I'm actively pushing this arm away as I pull it up. And it just grrr, so this up. But you get this stretch right under your shoulder blade. Really nice after handstand. Uh, we're just going to do that another time as well. But it's really that feel of resistance and that pull, and the shoulder blade's pulling out and around. It's just a beautiful stretch. So it's a slow, really feel that resistance. Oh. Slowly pulls up. And then we've got the other arm, which we're going to do twice as well. Again. Last little stretch for our shoulders we're going to do. So you can sit, uh, fingers pointing towards your toes, your hands back a little bit, you can sink your elbows back, try and keep them together so they can come wide, sink them together. It's a good stretch through the front of your shoulders. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, how's your Anzac weekend? Let, let me know how your Anzac weekend was. We can turn our hands around. You're gonna keep you try and keep your pinkies together as much as you can. You can walk your hands out. Be gentle on your elbows for this one. Sometimes you can get a bit tense. Just change where the stretch is gonna be on your shoulders. Which is always nice. Um, best part about this is the end, but we'll have to hang out here for a little bit before we go into that. And keep walking. This time our hands can come apart and they're going to keep walking further out and wider and further out and wider and further out and wider and further out and wider until you're oh, lying on the ground. And this is the best part about the stretch because you just finish lying on the ground and and it's done and you're good. Uh, that said, that's been handstands this week. Um, so hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, have a play. Uh, show me what you're doing. Show, show me them handstands. I want to see them handstands. It's good. Uh, other than that, I will hopefully see you guys around. So have a good time.